there, everyone. This is your host, Chadzilla, and uh, I've got something pretty special for you today. Um, whether you've seen my channel or not, uh, I've had an idea for something for about a year or so now that I've been knocking around that I'm just now getting around to actually making. Uh, so I have this idea for a podcast. Um, it's going to be called The Quiet Rewind. So this podcast is going to be something a little different. Um, if you want a point of comparison, if you're familiar with podcasts such as uh, Sleep With Me, done by Adira Scooter, wonderful podcast, I highly recommend checking that out. Or uh, conversely, something also similar, uh, the podcast The Empty Bowl. Uh, it's a meditative podcast about cereal, uh, where they uh, hosted by, co-hosted by Justin McElroy and Dan Goubert. I uh, highly recommend that as well. Uh, so this podcast here, uh, the Quiet Rewind. Uh, this is going to be, like I said, something different. It's going to be a meditative podcast uh, with a focus on relaxation, being something where you can just kind of tune out, um, you know, just kind of listen to the, uh, listen to my voice as you either drift off to sleep, uh, get something else done elsewhere. Uh, this is something that you'd want to put on in the background. That's that's really the. That's really what I would want this podcast to be made for. And if this is something where uh, this actually helps someone to relax, uh, that would be uh, the absolute goal, and th that would be what this is for. So the focus of this podcast is going to be on VHS, uh, movies, TV, the odd special, things like that. It, really anything is game here, and the more obscure the better. Uh, so I really want every episode to focus on one tape in particular, one release. It doesn't have to be something that was only released on VHS. It can have releases on more modern formats. Um, but if something was released on, on tape, that is really what we'd want to focus on here. Uh, so just to give you kind of an overview of what the show is going to be like, I'm going to... Uh, go over the tape itself, the packaging, um, the text that you get on the tape itself, but then also going over the contents of it. And if uh, if that doesn't sound interesting to you, I completely understand. I understand this is going to be a you know fairly niche kind of podcast, like the podcasts that I've mentioned previously and compared it to. Uh, so if you've tried those and you're not really a fan, I again I completely understand. But if this sounds like something you might enjoy. Uh, welcome aboard. I, this is something that I've been, like I said, I've been knocking around for quite some time now, and I've been really wanting to get it off the ground, and I just finally mustered up the time and the resources to do so. And of course, with this being something new, um, you know, I always want you guys, uh, you know, my audience, and anyone watching this to uh, give me feedback. I really want to hear if this is something that works or if this works on, on any level, really. Um, it's such an odd concept that throwing it out there, I've, I've been kind of curious to see how other people react to it. Uh, so, of course, you can always leave a comment. Um, and also, recommendations not just for the podcast itself as far as the format and what might better it, uh, but also uh, for what I can cover here. I'd really like to cover things that are sp that people would find nostalgic have a connection to. And of course, you know, everyone is nostalgic for something different. Uh, things that I grew up with are not going to be the same as things that someone else grew up with. Um, but I'd really like to tick those boxes for a lot of people and um, find things that people do enjoy and have a, have a soft spot for. And this is, you know, really the, the goal of this is, like I said, to relax you, but even if that you don't use this to fall asleep to something like that, I at least want to want you to come away with that feeling of that warm that warm fuzziness, that that good feeling of just something enjoyable, something nice and light. So speaking of nostalgia and my nostalgia in particular, but I think a lot of people will connect with this. Uh, hopefully not just me. Uh, the tape we're going to be covering today is a release of the. 80s cartoon DuckTales, done by Disney. And this was a personal favorite of mine that was, was one that I grew up with, 
and this tape also is a release of the show that I grew up with as well. So what we're going to be covering is a tape called High Flying Hero. Uh, it's about 40-something minute tape, so it's two episodes of the show. And this is from that era where you could release just a couple episodes of something on VHS and a later DVD. DVD utilized this kind of thing as well. Or you could just release a couple of episodes, you know, charge several dollars for it. And this was the way that you could watch TV at home if you had a favorite episode, favorite character, things like that that you wanted to focus on. So this tape in particular focuses on Launchpad McQuack, uh, one of my favorite characters. And uh, this tape has kind of an interesting history with me. I found it as a kid. When I found it as a kid, I got it new from a store. I believe it was from a Rite Aid, which is kind of an odd place to find a VHS tape. But if you think about it, you know, even now, uh, if you go to drugstores like Walgreens, pharmacies, things like that, it's pretty easy to find things on DVD, movies, TV, so I guess it's not really that out of the ordinary, but it was something that always stuck with me. It's a memory that I have just seeing it on display at, you know, in a pharmacy with my parents and, um, and seeking it out and ended up and getting the tape and being very happy to have a couple episodes of the show to watch. And I did have one or two other tapes as well. I think I had at least one other, not counting the movie. But this was the one, this is the one that uh, that shouts out to me when I think of DuckTales on VHS. I think of this case, this release in particular. So this was probably the one that I was, that I was the most akin to. Probably the one that I watched the most. And so what we're going to do now is, uh, first I'm going to I'll just actually peruse the tape itself. Just the, uh, just the case itself and just go over what we have. I think the back of a VHS tape, or the back of any media release, any physical release, is so important. It's it's so integral to what you're actually going to get. Um, just the way that they sell it, um, the way that they show the contents to you, uh, this is the first time you're seeing it. So I think it's so important to focus on this and just, you know, give it its due and give it a couple of minutes to focus on. So the back of the tape here, let me just start it out. It's Disney's DuckTales, High Flying Hero. They're daring, they're dynamite, they're Disney's DuckTales. Scrooge McDuck, Huey, Dewey, Louie, and a colorful cast of zany new characters find adventure and danger at every turn in this explosive new animated series. Disney's heroic new adventurer, Launchpad McQuack, finds his courage put to the test in two thrilling stories. In Hero for Hire, Launchpad is tricked by the evil Beagle Boys into performing a series of good deeds that are actually crimes. In Launchpad's Civil War, his participation in an annual Civil War pageant explodes into pandemonium when an unexpected family secret is revealed. Running time, 44 minutes. Color, not rated. Walt Disney Home Video. And we have the legal text here at the bottom. Licensed for private home exhibition only. All of the rights reserved. Distributed by Buena Vista Home Video, Burbank, California, 91521. Made and printed in USA, except cassettes distributed in Canada. Duplicated in Canada. And we have a copyright here in Roman numerals. So we have MCMLXXXVIII, which if I'm not mistaken would be 1988. Copyright 1998, The Walt Disney Company. So just there, this tape is actually a little older than I expected. I know the show is from the 80s, and I grew up with it in reruns in the 90s, since um, I grew up as a kid in the 90s. Um, but I guess it was just that, just the image of seeing it on a store shelf, seeing it as something new, and, and I, probably in shrink wrap, if I'm remembering correctly, and that just kind of gives you the air, especially as a kid, that oh, this is a new release, this is something special when that really wasn't the case at all. This was several years old when I got it in the early 90s. So now we're going to cover the uh, intro of the tape before we get to our first episode that's actually featured. Uh, so we have our standard FBI warnings. Uh, we have the Walt Disney Home Video logo uh, that shows up in red. It starts with Sorcerer Mickey from Fantasia and has this uh, pretty bombastic, really, really fantastic 
attuned to it that I've never heard anywhere else. I don't think they've ever used it for anything else. And if you grew up around this time, grew up in the 80s with those VHS releases, or like me in the 90s, uh, I think you definitely remember this from at least a handful of Disney movies if you grew up with those. Uh, it's just really iconic, and it's one of my personal favorites. It was a real treat to see this again. It'd been quite a long time. Now we also get another opening logo that I do not rem remember at all. Um, it's Walt Disney Mini Classics. Mini not as in the mouse, mini as in, as in small. Um, so it has this kind of rainbow logo, and it has its own little jingle as well. Uh, this was something that I, I did not recognize at first, but it kind of triggered that memory of seeing it again for the first time in probably, I don't maybe about 20 years. And also on this tape, uh, no trailers. There are no trailers here. There's uh, no previews, nothing for any new releases. It's not trying to sell any other tapes, at least not at the beginning, but we will, we will get to that. Now, so that would be something that going forward in this podcast, I really would actually like to cover the trailers because that's one of the most interesting things that's preserved on VHS that you don't get in quite the same way as other formats. Uh, with DVDs, you, know, you have chapter skips and you have your menu button, things like that. You have a much more efficient ways to skip of skipping all of these trailers. Um, but, you know, with VHS, of course, you could fast forward, but you're still going to, with most VACRs at least, you're still going to catch some image of, of what it was advertising, and you'd have to fast forward through several of these advertisements on most tapes, especially on film releases. I think film releases had these probably more than TV releases. And so our first episode starts uh, pretty much directly thereafter. And thankfully, of course, we get the DuckTales intro, which is, uh, if you're a fan of this era of Disney cartoons, it is a favorite. It's a favorite for a reason. It so holds up, it's a lot of fun, it's very catchy. And even with the DuckTales reboot starring David Tennant that's out on uh, Disney XD now, that's been going for a couple of years, which I highly recommend. I've only seen the first few episodes so far, but I really would like to dig into the reboot more. It's very good and really sets itself apart from the original show. It doesn't feel like it's just doing the 80s show again. It feels like its own thing. It feels like its own beast. And that's definitely for the best for it. One thing I re really remember about the DuckTales intro was trying to find and piece together all the little vignettes that whiz by so quickly and what episode they were from. I was never able to see every episode of the show, even though I actually do own the entire series on DVD currently. Uh, so at some point, I would like to actually go back and find which episode all of these little these little clips are from. Um, but there were several just in catching it on TV and through these VHS releases that I was able to find. And we actually will get to that uh, later on as well. So past the DuckTales intro, uh, we get our episode title for the first episode. It's Hero for Hire. Uh, so we open with uh, Uncle Scrooge unveiling the the new McDuck Bank. And alongside the bank, uh, he also introduces the anti-Beagle Boy burglar alarm. And so the Beagle Boys are going to be pretty centric to this first episode. Uh, if you're not familiar with the show, uh, they are a group that, in this episode at least, are presented as kind of a family unit. Even if they're not actually related, they behave as such, which is kind of a fun idea. So they are their namesake, they are Beagles, um, and they're uh, pretty prominent throughout the show. I remember them showing up a lot in both the show and also in the comics as well, uh, both older and newer than the show. Uh, the Donald Duck comics, but also the um, Uncle Scrooge comic. So when we first see the Beagle Boys in this episode, our introduction to them is a pretty reminiscent of another cartoon from around that same time, and that would be Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So we see them wearing disguises, uh, we see them wearing a fedora and trench coat, uh, just like the Turtles would. And uh, speaking of that franchise, uh, that's a franchise that I love a lot as well. And the fedora and trench coat doesn't just show up in the 80s cartoon, it also shows up in the 90s Jim Henson live-action movies as well, at least in the first one. I don't remember if it shows up in the second one, Secret of the Ooze, I'd have to go back and watch that one again. 
And that one is actually my personal favorite. And to go off on a tangent, which will definitely be occurring a lot on this podcast, I, I think tangents will be uh, kind of a recurring thing. On the Ninja Turtles podcast, or <laughs> podcast, if there is a Ninja Turtles podcast, I'd like to listen to it. I'm sure they're out there, actually. I, I mean, you have podcasts for every fandom. I mean, look at me. I'm making a podcast about old VHS tapes. There's a podcast for anything, really. Uh, what I meant to say was Ninja Turtles franchise. Uh, it's something that I really love. Uh, I have not dived as deep as a lot of people have. It wasn't something that was near and dear to my heart as a kid. It's something that I that was kind of nebulous around me. It was something that I was always aware of. Um, but only recently I've gotten into going back and watching the movies, uh, some of the cartoons, uh, reading some of the comic books, things like that. And it's so much fun. The toys, things like that as well. It's really great. So highlighting, and there are plenty of things Ninja Turtle related that were released on VHS throughout the years. Um, so I would be more than happy to highlight some turtle stuff on this podcast in the future. And so moving on with the plot of this episode of DuckTales in particular. Uh, so Launchpad ruins the uh, the opening of the new McDuck Bank uh, by crashing his helicopter, which is kind of his MO. Uh, crashing his helicopter is what he is always going to be doing in this show. Uh, so Launchpad is fired by Scrooge McDuck for doing so. And also, uh, one thing, uh, there's a character that shows up in both of the episodes that are on this tape, and it's not a character that I remember being in a lot of the show, but he must have been at some point. I'm actually curious if he was an addition to later seasons, later episodes. Um, the character in question, his name is Doofus, and uh, if just by hearing the character's name, uh, if you're conjuring up an image of what this character might look like, uh, it's probably pretty accurate. Uh, it feels like the kind of character that would be kind of a studio mandate of a kid character who's just kind of doofy, kind of comic relief, is going to kind of be bumbling and getting things wrong. But I think that's kind of... That's not really the best approach, and we already have Launchpad for that, and Launchpad is great. Launchpad is a very fun character, um, so we already have a bumbling adult. We don't need a bumbling kid as well. Um, we already have the kids, Huey, Dewey, and Louie, and to a lesser extent, Webby in this series. Uh, Webby has, thankfully, more character and more to do in the new show. Speaking of the new show, I don't think I ever finished that thought going back. I think I was uh, going on about the theme song that I love so much, and uh, what the thought that I was meaning to cap that off with was that the theme song is uh, reutilized and revamped in the new show as well. So they did not write a new song, they just got it re-recorded, and it sounds fantastic. I love the way that the theme song sounds for the new show but it just speaks to the power of this theme song, that people love it so much and that it just endures so well, um, that they could just use it, you know, didn't have to change anything lyric-wise or melody-wise, the melody is so fantastic, that they can use it for a new show as in the 2010s as well. Right, so speaking of the character Doofus, so he's going to be following Launchpad around for pretty much this entire episode. It's really just going to focus on them. Uh, for about 90% of it. And so Doofus is a member of the Junior Woodchucks, which is kind of the Boy Scouts analog that Huey, Dewey, and Louie are in as well, uh, that shows up throughout the show and gets name-dropped a lot. Uh, so from the title of this episode, Hero for Hire, uh, Launchpad's conundrum in this episode is that he doesn't feel like he is a hero. He wants to help people. Uh, instead of crashing things, he wants to be able to help people. And do things right. Uh, there's kind of a running joke where he saves a cat from a tree, ends up in the back of a dump truck, and ends up in the same dump truck uh, later on in the episode. And there's also a, a pretty funny bit where a launch pad sees a man at the top of a building who, uh, they, who he and Doofus think is going to jump, so he runs up to save the man and talk him down. Uh, but of course it ten it ends up being a, a window washer or a painter, someone doing maintenance on the building. Now, there's also a joke in this episode 
about a woman robbing a licorice store. So that was something that kind of flew over my head as a kid. And we're introduced to um, a couple of the Beagle Boys characters that each have their own characteristics. Uh, one is kind of the kind of a basic, like, brute kind of character. One's short and wears a propeller hat like a kid. And the third is my personal favorite. And he's kind of dressed and talks like a beatnik, stereo like a beatnik stereotype. Uh, but he's kind of a fun character. He gets a couple of lines throughout the episode. I don't know if he showed up in other episodes. I don't immediately remember, but it's very likely that he could have. Uh, so we're introduced to the Beagle Boy's mother. Uh, so this is what I'd, I believe I'd said earlier about them kind of acting like a family unit. Uh, they all operate out of the same house. So she evades the police by acting like a like a you know frail elderly woman to get Launchpad and Doofus to help her across the street and shield her from cop cars going by. And so the main crux of this episode, aside from Launchpad wanting to be a hero, how that goes about is the Beagle Boys and their mother in particular uh, trick Launchpad into thinking that they're shooting a movie. Uh, they uh, act like they want him to be the star of a superhero film, where he's going to be the webbed wonder. Um, so he, of course, signs up for it. Um, so what they do is they use him to um, run into banks multiple times and say that he needs to save the money. So, and of course, robbing the money from the bank. And I kind of like to, I would have liked to have seen more of this character, and if he if this showed up, if this persona showed up later in the show, uh, let me know, but I don't remember seeing him at any other point. I don't know if it's ever been referenced in any other DuckTales media, but it'd be fun to see this character resurface in some way, at least as some kind of Easter egg, or if they incorporated him into the new show, I think they could really do something with that. I think it'd be fun. Uh, there's one point as well in this episode where we get a uh, what I wrote in my notes as a charming 80s commercial break in what I can only refer to as the we'll be right back saxophone. That's a terrible joke, I know, but it's just something that I had to point out. Uh, just having this little sac upbeat saxophone beat uh, play you out to the uh, to your toy ads or movie trailers, whatever you were going to going to show when that episode was airing. It's just incredibly charming to me and I, I love it. So when the Beagle Boys are shooting their fake movie to try to get Launchpad to steal the money for them by running into the banks, uh, they say that the production is headed up by a Mr. Spielbeak, and I'm disappointed um, that they did not make any Spielberg movie, you know, kind of Duckbergian puns. I think there was kind of a missed opportunity to at least have some you know, fake mock-up posters in the background or have them rat rattle off a couple of films referencing Spielberg and Amblin Entertainment, but putting a, a duck Disney spin on them. You know, it could be as simple as, oh, just off the top of my head, like E.T. the Extraterrestrial. You know, something like that. I'm actually thinking of, I'd say E.T. probably came out around the same time as this episode. It was probably a couple of years beforehand, right? I would say E.T. was before this. Uh, you know, not being a child of the 80s, being a kid of the 90s, I love 80s stuff, but it tends to blend together as far as timeline-wise. You know, not being there, it's all just kind of a date and a, pro and a product, so... But as far as I remember, as far as I can think, I would say that E.T. was around before DuckTales. Or, you know, Close Encounters of the Feathered Kind, something like that. You know, you have, you have a lot to work with there, I think. And one thing that stood out to me in this episode was just the use of establishing shots with uh, matte paintings. It's something that I would really like to see, uh, just to see these these paintings and these, uh, you know, art pieces that were used to cut between different scenes, like the Scrooge's Money Bin especially is one that you see in this episode and in plenty of other episodes as well. I'd love to just see that up close and see it isolated. I think it'd be really cool to see. I also have to point out the uh, Webbed Wonders a fake catchphrase that they tell him to say to have the money given to him when he runs into the bank, and it's never fear, the webbed wonder is here, give me all the money. You know, pretty straightforward. 
So as this goes on throughout the episode, as Launchpad continues to steal from different banks, and he becomes pretty quickly suspicious, but continues it as well, he becomes suspicious, of course. Um, you know, Launchpad isn't a, isn't a complete fool. So the Webbed Wonder becomes uh, something of the talk of the town, as we see through newspapers and cutting back to Uncle Scrooge. And we get to see Launchpad's home in this episode as well, which is something where, again, I don't remember how often you got to see that in the rest of the show, but it's interesting to see. But one thing that's even more interesting is uh, seeing Launchpad without his a typical you know, aviator helmet. And you can see his orange hair underneath it, but it uh, gave me pause that you actually see his like perfectly coiffed uh, giant head of orange hair and when he's sitting down with breakfast with Doofus in one scene of the show. Uh, there's also my favorite joke in the show, and that's when Launchpad goes to the police when he figures out what's actually going on and that he's being had. So he goes to the police, and the uh, policeman, when he's going to rat out the Beagle Boys and turn, turn himself in for what he can, uh, the police headquarters gets a call, uh, answers it, says hello, uh, turns to Launchpad and says, Oh, it's for you and hands him the phone. And how this happens, of course, is that the uh, Beagle Boys break into Launchpad's home, and they kidnap Doofus, and they force him to tell the location of where Launchpad went, and uh, he is forced to tell them that you know he was going to rat them out to the police. And we also see, and I know it was recurring in the show, um, but it certainly stood out to me just as an adult not having seen the show in quite a long time, uh, we get a kind of a B-plot of Uncle Scrooge and Duckworth. Uh, Duckworth was his uh, driver slash butler. I think he had a couple of couple of roles throughout the mansion and throughout the estate, which was always kind of odd to me. Uh, you know, Duckworth is his name, but typically the names in this show tend to coincide, at least the last names tend to coincide with what species of animal they are. Uh, but Duckworth is clearly some kind of dog. So is it, I understand that he's, you know, he's taking care of the McDuck estate, but where did the name Duckworth come from? So uh, what we see is up Scrooge's uh, purple limo. And my first thought when I saw it was, I wish there was a toy of that. And probably at some point there was, if there is, I have not seen. I'd actually love to see if there was. Um, but I think that's kind of a missed opportunity now. Uh, you could release this as kind of a collector's piece as a higher scale toy of Scrooge's a very cool purple car. I would absolutely buy it. And so we get to uh, Launchpad going to save Doofus uh, from being kidnapped by the Beagle Boys. And we have a, a pretty great scene of the, of the Ma Beagle uh, baking different cakes and pies, things like that, um, but putting nail files, chainsaws, um, things to help their brothers and the rest of the Beagle Boys escape from prison. And she lists, lists off uh, several creative names for the different pastries and things that she's making, uh, one of which is Chocolate Chainsaw Surprise. Um, so she uh, puts on the, the air that she had earlier in the episode where she acted as if she were a frail older woman, and gives Launchpad a pie to bite into. I believe it's a cherry pie, if, I'm look, if I remember right. And of course, Launchpad takes a bite of the pie, and there's a giant nail file in it. And this is the point of the episode where I actually was able to find one clip from the intro that actually is from this episode, and that's of, of the Beagle Boys in their car, and the car kind of jumps up in the air, and then gets going off screen. And that was one that always stood out to me as a kid, just one of the stills that they use, or, well, not stills, if it's moving, I guess it wouldn't be a still, would it? Uh, one of the uh, quick little vignettes that they use in the intro. I'm actually curious if the intro ever changed. I don't believe it ever did, but from the episodes that I saw, it always had the same clips in it. Uh, so to wrap things up for this episode, uh, the Beagle Boys are put away by the police. They kind of, they literally fly into the back of a police van and are locked up during a quick little chase scene. And there's a scene where Scrooge shows you know how much he cares for Launchpad and he thinks that he's actually lost him 
Uh, there's a scene where they think that he has that he has drowned. Uh, so Launchpad is okay, of course. It was just the costume. It was the Webbed Wonder costume, and they fished it out of the river. And Launchpad uh, says that he wants the job back for Uncle Scrooge, who in this show he refers to as Mr. McD. Um, he never, I don't think he ever referred to him as Mr. Scrooge. I always remember him referring to him as Mr. McD. Um, so he, so in haggling his uh, return back to to work, he takes a pay cut and ends up working for half. And we end on a joke of how much of a good haggler he is. Uh, so the with the first episode fading to black, we get this quick little clip uh, where we have an announcer say, and now another exciting DuckTales adventure. We get a little music sting in the background. We get what looks like to be a Polaroid of Launchpad. Uh, that's something unique. It's not something, not a still from the show. It looks like it was something that was created just for this or possibly for some promotional material. So that's pretty interesting. And the background looks like the map from the end credits of the episode, which we'll get to it get to in a little bit as well. So the second episode uh, is called Launchpad Civil War. Uh, so this one, I don't remember this episode as much as I remember the first one as a kid. I feel like the first episode was the one that I really liked, and probably the reason that I rewatched this tape as much as I did. Uh, the second episode, I still enjoyed it. I still had some moments, but I think the first episode was the one that stood out to me when as a kid. And rewatching it as an adult, it still still stood out to me a little bit more. So the plot of this episode, Launchpad Civil War, is interesting in the sense that so a civil war happened at some point apparently fairly recently like within one lifetime in this universe that mirrors the american civil war pretty much to the t down to even the uniforms and even seeing a confederate flag so that was kind of surprising to me I, you don't typically get things like that where it just mirrors Ameri american history so directly so blatantly in something like this so of course it makes me think you know are there other things that are exactly the same just with animals you know ducks pigs dogs these kind of you know these kind of species acting as people is this some kind of alternate timeline where these where very similar things happened but not to humans and so launch pads uh, great-great-grandfather was a general in the Civil War and fought for the analog of the North. So he gets uh, not a telegram, but a quackogram, which was also something I don't remember them establishing in this universe, so that's another thing where it's something akin to uh, technology that's, you know, been kind of repurposed as something. But even then, something like a quackogram of some kind of communication is different from a civil war that's you know so blatantly mirroring actual events so launchpad mcquack is the great great grandson of general rhubarb mcquack and uh, launchpad gets an invitation to go to a civil war reenactment where he gets to play his great great grandfather and he accepts so he and the boys go to a, a southern city a southern town rather uh, that seems uh, to be very up on their Civil War history. This seems to be something that they celebrate a lot, um, to the point where they have a parade about it, and this is where and they have this reenactment of this battle, uh, it's, and it's the Battle of Duck Ridge. That's what they refer it to to it as. So of course, immediately something feels kind of off. Uh, the people that uh, Launchpad and, as I'd mentioned earlier, uh, Doofus is in this episode as well. So he tags along along with Huey, Dewey, and Louie, they come with. Uh, they're, and they're really the main characters from the show that we get in this. We don't really get much or anything of Scrooge or Webby or the other characters at all. So uh, Launchpad was uh, duped in this episode into believing that he was at first to accept, uh, to accept the position of being in the reenactment. He was led to believe that his great-great-grandfather was the hero of this battle, when, of course, in fact, um, it was his blundering and his mistakes that led to the analog of the Confederacy winning this battle, so he's brought on to be essentially humiliated. 
in front of this town just for their amusement. And so as they're piecing this together, Launchpad is given a horse to ride uh, for the next morning. And Launchpad, uh, being a character who crashes things such as vehicles, he finds a way to crash a horse as well. So he's stuck uh, riding the horse backwards and comes upon this very ducktailsy cave, like the cave that he finds, uh, the matte paintings and the design of it, felt like something out of other episodes of DuckTales, and it felt very much at home with that series. It felt like something you would find treasure in in a different episode of this show. So Launchpad ends up finding the entire battalion. Well, is battalion the right word? I'm not up on my Civil War history. He finds the, the soldiers of General Rhubarb McQuack, who are all still alive, very old, with large beards dragging the ground. And a lot of their characteristics and a lot of the humor from this episode comes from uh, comes from the juxtaposition of them kind of being stuck out of time. Um, so of course that means that this battle and this war took place within one lifetime, so that's not much. It's just interesting that you don't hear much about it in the rest of the show. But then within the timeline of this show, um, just within one lifetime, they're able to get all these, all this modern technology, you know, race cars, lasers, airplanes, as it says in the theme song, now some pretty high tech stuff. And there's another character as well that makes an appearance and has a couple of lines throughout the episode. And it's an older woman who uh, seems to say and seems to remember uh, this battle firsthand, that she was there and she was alive, presumably a kid when this was happening. So again, all within one time, one all within one lifetime. But so of course with the reenactment, um, so Launchpad is able to um, get the men out of the cave and is able to convince them to come back, even though they are afraid that the town will shun them, and that they would be humiliated and would be run out of the town, hence the reason why they never went back. So Launchpad is able to convince them to uh, be in the reenactment, and they're able to turn the tide of the actual battle uh, to the the analog of the North um, actually winning this battle. And we end on a happy ending of the town actually accepting them, and them becoming citizens of the town again, and them being welcomed back in, given a place to live. So at the end of the tape, uh, we get the closing credits, not just for the second episode, uh, but for the first episode first. So the way that it's formatted, you get the intro once, then the two episodes sandwiched together, and then the outro credits twice in a row, with a quick fade to black in between them. And the last thing on this tape, the very last thing here, uh, the outro here is just this one little screen with a black background that shows up with the DuckTales logo, and it says, collect them all. And it lists three VHS releases to collect, which I would assume would all be with two episodes just like this one. Uh, so the three that they list are Daredevil Ducks, High Flying Hero, and Fearless Fortune Hunter. So this was High Flying Hero, so there are at least two other VHS tapes that were out at this time. And judging from the back of the box, the way it's worded, it seems like this was one of the first VHS releases, and especially with it coming out in the 80s, that seems to be the case. This was probably one of the early releases of the show on home video. So that is it for this tape. That's it for DuckTales' High Flying Hero. And that's it for this episode of The Quiet Rewind. And again, I know this ep this uh, podcast isn't going to be something that's for everyone. It's not going to be, you know, to everyone's to everyone's sensibilities. Um, but again, if you like podcasts such as Sleep with Me or The Empty Bowl, or if you just want something meditative, um, something to put on in the background, I hope you enjoyed this, and I I certainly plan on making more uh, just like this. And uh, with this being the first episode, this of course is kind of a test run. Uh, there are things that I'd like to iron out and things that I'd like to get better on. This was this is my first time actually making a podcast. So again, um, I would certainly welcome any criticism. Um, just let me know in the comments what you think of it. Uh, if you have any ideas or any feedback for it, I would certainly appreciate it. And also recommendations. I think that's going to be the main thing for the show to kind of fuel it and keep it going. Uh, recommendations for what tape to talk about next. Uh, if there's anything in particular that you think would be a good fit, 
um, whether it's a couple of episodes of a TV show like this was, or it's or if it's a movie that was released on VHS, a weird uh, holiday special, things like that. I'm I'm welcome to and happy to talk about anything like that, and I think anything is pretty much fair game here. Uh, so again, uh, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed, and um, I'll catch you next time. Also, before I forget, uh, since those will be posted to YouTube, uh, feel free to subscribe to Chadzilla's channel uh, for more updates and new episodes coming up. And also you can follow me on Instagram at Chadzillagram, that's C-H-A-D-Z-I-L-L-A-G-R-A-M. And you can also follow me on Twitter at Chadzilla Blabs, so that's C-H-A-D-Z-I-L-L-A-B-L-A-B-S. And if you enjoyed this, um, pass it around. I think the best way to get something like this going is to uh, share it with friends or anyone that you think might enjoy this. Thanks again for listening, and this has been The Quiet Rewind.